I knew that the town was flourishing, but I wondered what the internal situation was really like. I was concerned about that, so I decided to pose the question. By the way, Myrmiles Khan, how are things going outside the labyrinth? Myrmiles' face lit up. It's lively, that one word says it all. The festival has already ended, but I don't see a big change in the population. It is safe to assume that the merchants are now on a steady stream. In other words, does that mean that this town has started to become a trading hub? That's right. The merchants looking to do business have begun to pay me visits. Not all of them were coming through connections, so Rigor Dono seems to have been busy handling correspondences. Ranging from those affiliated with the Freedom Association to wealthy merchants in Western countries, inquiries about opening a shop have been stacking up. That seemed to be going more smoothly than I had thought. We succeeded in bringing people over with the Tempest Apu Festival as the spark. On top of that, the labyrinth that we created for fun enjoyed surging popularity and was able to win the hearts and minds of visitors. All that's left was to direct the money into a smooth flow. We let those who challenge the labyrinth earn money and consume our country's goods. Products included not only lodging and meals, but also weapons, armor, and supplies. Naturally, merchants from other countries would also play a part there. The Freedom Association would buy up the monster materials and pour money back into our country. Merchants from foreign lands would bring various kinds of rare goods. By the time that happened, the town would be bustling with activity. In the meantime, our country would earn a reputation for the excellent products made here. We had a wide selection of local specialties to offer, many of them were culinary ingredients and alcohol, along with the countless dishes Shuna developed with them. There were also various kinds of weapons and armor made in Kirby's workshop. Now that several of Cajun's disciples were working together, a variety of products were available. There were many other things too, but I was sure there would be more yet to come. It spread by word of mouth, and even without putting much effort into advertising the product, customers would surely come. And as a result, this country was bound to become recognized and required by many. But wait, there's more. Some of the gear that came from Kirby's workshop was displayed in markets as this city's specialty product. The armaments traded there would also attract a lot of attention. They were sold by different shops depending on the quality, but high-performance equipment could be bought if you had the right amount of cash. Though, when it came to rare grade and above equipment, I only planned to exhibit it on the 95th floor of the labyrinth. Some might question its performance, but that wasn't a big deal. After all, there was a place close by where you could try out the products you bought. There were still only a handful of people using this service, but we did offer rental gear for challengers as well. And it would only be a matter of time before news of how great the quality of the products was, would spread on its own. And so, little by little, the trust in this country piled up. Credibility was more important than profit. I didn't think that we had to run a deficit to gain credibility, but if we are in the black overall, we could call it a success. Our goal was not to make money, but to get this country recognized on the world stage. It is as we expected. The merchants still approach us in spite of Tempus being a kingdom of monsters, because they can smell the profits. The number of challengers continues to grow, and it seems we have an opportunity to get along with the Western nations. Accepting my wishes, my Miles nodded as well. There doesn't seem to be a problem. The number of customers is increasing steadily. This is with the knowledge that this is a monster country ruled by a demon lord. We can safely assume that we've gained credibility, just as Ramur Sama intended, he agreed emphatically. Besides, Meyer Miles was a really interesting man. Weeha. From that statement, you could tell that even though he was a human, his thought process was entirely from our perspective. That does put a smile on my face. Credibility is not something you can earn at the drop of a hat. As they say, trust is a fragile thing hard to gain, but easy to lose. Few words were truer than that. Although we attracted people by stimulating their desires, it was another matter to gain their trust. If he regarded us as someone who satisfied their desires, that meant you had gained their trust. Meyer Miles is a good example, we were bound by a trusting relationship built upon desire. Do a good job and reap the proper benefits I believe this to be important. Of course, pursuing your desires one-sidedly is an unpleasant way to go about it. You must look deeply into a person's character to gauge if they're worthy of trust. This was the perfect time to hone that very skill. With Meyer Miles as the teacher, there was still lots for me to learn. After that, I gave Ramrus and Vildor their pay, the two of them looked happy. I did tell them not to waste it, but do they even think about what they're buying? Despite these doubts, the discussion carried on. Now that the labyrinth was on track, I was thinking about devoting myself to the things I loved. The research facility, which was newly prepared on the 100th floor, was divided into several compartments. At present we had laboratories headed by Gabble and facilities where Ramrus conducted her personal research. Um, could you prepare a facility for me as well? Fine, but are you going to do some research as well, Rumuru? No, in my case, it's development. I've got a lot of things on my mind, so I thought I'd make them. 
When it came to research, Kirby was working much more diligently than I was. His workshop was located in the southwest part of the city, and the surrounding area was lined with the workshops of disciples who were recognized as master craftsmen. It was said that some artisans who heard the rumors had taken up residence there, and some even opened their own workshops. These people were also repairing equipment, and now it was a kind of industrial area. Therefore, the technology developed there was nigh impossible to hide. This was a place where everyone could share and learn from each other, in a friendly competition that was no place to conduct confidential research and development. What I asked Kirby was to make armor and technical stuff, which no one else could feasibly imitate. Besides, I didn't need the space to do any research, all thanks to Raphael Sensei. That's why I wanted a place to set up the development, based on the diagrams I had completed in my brain. Okay. I'll have it ready for you today. Ramrus readily agreed to my request. And with that, the lowest floor, the 100th floor underground, the one that began as the Great Hall Awful Door, became a large space with various research facilities. Viewing it from the perspective of defense as well as leak prevention, there was no other place that guaranteed this level of security. It was truly impregnable. From now on, important projects would be carried out in this location. So, Remuru, just what are you trying to make? It's a secret. What? You always make the strangest things, so I'm quite curious. That's right. There should be no secrets between you and me. What nonsense. Ramrus and Vildor are always up to something behind my back. But when it comes to this, these two are persistent. Deceiving them was even more of a hassle, so I decided to give them a proper answer. It's about bodies. I'm planning to make one for Trainee Sans sisters to use. In truth, I was thinking about preparing the quantity Diablo had requested as well. When it came to amounts around 1000, making them by hand would have been a Herculean task. With this in mind, I wanted a facility capable of mass production. Make it big, I have quite a lot of things I want to try out. Okay. Since it's for my subordinate, I'll do what I can to help. Putting an emphasis on the subordinate part, Ramrus accepted my request. Hee <laughs> hee, it was right to only give half of truth. With this, I'll be able to experiment to my heart's content. Until now, the idea was just floating in my head, without the spare time to make it happen. Finally, I could dive into developing it. I grinned at the thought. A couple more days passed. I was engrossed in installing the equipment for the development. I could finally get to work after looking forward to this for a long time, and incorporated Raphael Sand's input as it replicated a bunch of stuff in my stomach. If these had been bits of technology that were meant to be passed on to future generations, I would never have done things the way I did. But I didn't intend to share this tech with the public in the first place, so I didn't restrain myself and created whatever I wanted. It was then that someone called for me from outside. And just when I thought that I was beginning to be productive. Report. You have been cut off from outside communication for several days. Something might have happened. Now that Raphael San had pointed it out, I realized that I wasn't even eating anything. I was too absorbed in what I was doing, and I didn't realize that until Raphael Sand stepped in to make me aware of it. Even if nothing happened, Shuna and Xian would have been worried about me, nonetheless. It just so happened that my work was done, for now, I guess it's time for me to show up for a change. I answered the call and stepped outside the R&D facility. It was indeed Shuna and Xian on the other side. Remuru sama is everything alright? I was worried sick. You always look forward to dining, yet you haven't shown up for mealtime in the past few days. We were just wondering if something had happened to you. They really were worrying about me. Sorry, I got a little too focused here. I it's alright. As long as you are fine. Sean is right. You have always been working hard. And even if Ramiro Sama acts more free-spiritedly, people won't really complain. Knowing that I was alright, Sean and Shuna smiled. I need to seriously reflect on myself for having them worried this time. From today onward, I will show up every day. I will be very happy if you would do that. I suppose. I really need to stop getting carried away with my interests. But merely knowing that someone was worried about me cheered me up. Halfway through my introspection, Xian suddenly recalled something and began to mutter. Speaking of which, Myrmile San has been looking for Ramir Sama since yesterday. Eh? Hey, if that was the case, couldn't you just come and find me? We did, but you weren't responding. Sorry, we should have shouted a bit louder. Ah, it's okay. I was the one at fault. It's all because I got lost in thought. I will prepare something like a call bell for such occasions in the future. It seemed that Xian didn't think it was anything urgent, but seeing that Meyer Miles was still looking for me to that day, she became anxious and went to discuss it with Shuna. Moreover, Xian further mentioned that what Meyer Miles wanted to talk about had to do with the labyrinth, yet he didn't tell her the details. Did he feel that she wouldn't understand or was it something that he couldn't tell Xian? Meyer Miles' thoughts were intriguing. Speaking of which, Diablo may have been more qualified than I had expected. 
In times like this, Diablo would have definitely come to call me out. He might have gone so far as to just come in by himself. Now that I think about it, Diablo was probably even more stubborn than Sean. But let's put that thought aside. I should go find Meyer Miles. Shuna made me some pack sandwiches, and Sean made me some black tea. While enjoying my food, I waited for Meyer Miles' arrival. Oh oh, Ramiro sama I've been looking for you. Something terrible has happened. Meyer Miles burst out in panic before me, quite unlike my own casual attitude. What, what happened? Did we get complaints from customers? I thought as I asked. There have been other people who made it through floor 30, after Masayuki Sen. Wow, that's impressive. They are progressing faster than I expected. Now is not the time for such idle chit chat. They are progressing at lightning speed, and are already approaching the 40th floor's boss room. Whoa, wow wow. Indeed, now wasn't the time for chilling. But I didn't think such panic was warranted. Upon coming to that conclusion, what Meyer Miles said next changed my mind on the matter. Their strategy is bordering on foul play, moving in grey areas that could potentially violate the labyrinth rules. For instance. And so on and so forth, Meyer Miles continued without pause. Seriously, this was unexpected. 